What's up, good people? We are our one faith, and we're back for episode three. Why Jesus Christ? Um, the faith. Uh, why faith in Jesus Christ? Hold on, help me out, bro. <laughs> <laughs> help me, Holy Ghost. Help, help me, Lord. Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost. We, we, we talk about Christ, but why um, having faith in Christ? Yeah, why should I have faith why in Christ? Why should I have faith in Christ? We're getting um, it together, y'all. We're we going to get it together. together. We're still we, we're working out the kinks. It's been almost a year and a half, it's but people of God. Minute. We are back and we are excited um, to spread the gospel. Yeah. Um, me and my brother, we got a, we have a responsibility. Yes, we, we do. have a responsibility to make sure that you are getting the word because some of you may not be able to go to church and that's okay. You I, need to be in you, church. Yeah. But you, you need you to heard go to the church. Apostle. You heard the go apostle. to church. <laughs> you heard the apostle. Go on, go to church. Go to church. However, we're here to provoke your thinking. We're here to provoke your ministry. We're here to provoke you so that you are going out and being fishers of men. That's right. And again, you know, um, we got to have faith in Christ outside of a building. Yes. Outside of the hype, outside of praise and worship. You have to be when when you go into the Bible says faith come by hearing, hearing the word of God. Mm -hmm. And the Bible also says we go from faith to faith. We go from glory to glory, mm -hmm. which means that we're every season of our life or every moment of our life. There is always something more. There is always higher. There is always a place that we can go. Yeah. And in order to do that, our faith has to be built up. Mm -hmm. If our faith is not built up and not in our ability, come on, not in um, what we know. But our faith has to be completely surrendered to God. Right. Is your faith completely surrendered to God? And why should we have faith in God? I'm going to let my brother speak after that. That's good. You're going to make me hit my Joel Osteen. Uh -huh. you Come talk on. About going to church. Get in a good Bible based church. <laughs> Keep God in first place. It's going to take you places that you never even dreamed of. That's the first thing I thought about. <laughs> Go ahead, bro. Go ahead, bro. But no, man, I, I'm with you, man. I'm with you like, right off the bat, bro. It's important. You know, I think that you, a lot of y'all will see a lot of these videos cut up and on um, Instagram and on social media, Facebook, all these different platforms, because that's the platform that God has gifted us in order to be able to share what we're trying to do. But essentially, it's important that you understand that especially new believers, new converts and, and even pre-existing believers and people who've been here for a while, you know, you can't just get all that you know about God from a 30 second Instagram real clip. Mm -hmm. You can't understand fully everything from all these different false prophets and false teachers that are out here on social media, in these sure. social media streets, bro. Like I've, I literally have seen some videos and I, and, and I'm like, wow, what in the world? Wow. And it's like, you know, I, I definitely understand now why, like, you know, it's, this platform is so important. Yes, sir. Because what God has birthed and put in me is that, you know, we need to correct a lot of this bad theology that's, that's being sent out here by these false prophets. And it goes back to what we said in the last episode, you know, Satan, he is a masterful deceiver, a manipulator, and he wants to do everything he can to thwart the plans in your life to keep you from going where God is is has purpose and plan for you to go. And because of that, he'll use all these different people on social media. Man. To just say weird stuff, bro. Like, let me, let me say something right there and then I'm going to give it back to you. But first Timothy, come on, says first Timothy in one and four says, neither give heed to fables and in this genealogies, which mm. ministers questions, mm -hmm. Everything that you hear, and I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to finish it. But when you're hearing about Christ, there is, as we spoke about in um, our last episode, there is a beginning. So there wouldn't, it wouldn't lead you to more questions. It wouldn't lead you to a place where you're doubting who Christ is. But anything that is leading you to a place that you, you like, well, where did this go and how does that happen and different things of that nature then you might want to be careful because we know who our beginning is Come in on. the beginning. God, Come on, that's it. That's it. In the beginning, God. And we should never try to, um, we should never try to box God into a human being. That's number mm -hmm. one. You can't box him in um, to a human being and, and how we think, because the Bible says his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. 
And with that being said, he gives us a roadmap, which is his word. He mm-hmm. came and died for us. Mm-hmm. So this is why we have to have faith in him mm-hmm. because there is a beginning mm-hmm. and, and there is an end. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So we know um, there is a beginning. The beginning is him and the end is him. Come it's on. God. So with that being said, like uh, Paul told Timothy, he said, don't give heed to fables and endless genealogies. Come on. Rather, godly edifying. What is the word of God for? It's for the godly edifying. Mm. It's to edify us. It's to make us better each and every day um, in, our, in our families, in our careers, as, um, as we go out and, we're, and our light is shining. It is important that we're doing our part. But the only way that we do that. Come on. It's hearing the word of God is the only way that we do that is coming together and understanding the word of God Mm -hmm. and iron sharpening iron because there are so many people. And I say this all the time and I will continue to say it because I believe it. I have a conviction about it. There are so many people that is waiting on your testimony. Come on. There are so many people. I was just um, listening to a guy who was once an atheist who is now um, who who does apologetics. Mm -hmm. But he because he was trying to think it through instead of really listening and having an open heart and open mind about it. uh, When he opened his mind and his heart, he realized, wait a minute, there is some truth to this. Mm -hmm. There is some understanding to this. Mm -hmm. But you have to be willing to dig deep. Go ahead, Mm -hmm. bro. No, that's good. That's good. You have to be willing to dig deep and you have to know and i can't emphasize this enough you have to know the word of god for yourself yes like there are so many false prophets so many false teachers so many people that are just saying whatever that they want to say they're twisting the scriptures to fit their own narrative and it's important that you understand fully the word of god the word of god is what's going to keep you in these last and evil days and yes i said last and evil days because we are living yes, in sir. the last and evil days and probably the last of the last yes, yes, <laughs> last of evil days yes, and it's just so evident by everything that's going on in the world i don't think that it's by happenstance that things are happening and, and are playing out the way that they are playing out i think that it's just the bible the word of god um, really foretelling itself and showing us exactly what we need to really rely and stand on is it and I can't I can't just let this thing go about people that you hear on social media because it's kind of oxymoronic because you know we're going to be on social media doing all these different you know (laughs) clips and stuff too but it's so important because there's so many things that's being said Mm -hmm. and that's being spread and it's like our 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 core tenets of our faith uh, or uh, of the things that we believe are being challenged from salvation to faith, to even the thoughts or thinking about uh, about God and who he is. All of these things are being challenged. And it's only because of the fact that Satan wants to do everything he can to manipulate you into hell. And I can't I can't I can't stress that enough because of the fact that, you know, as a as a believer, as a Christian, but also as a man of God, who's who's also able to see things as well and interpret things you know i have to warn you and i have to i have to say these things because it is so imperative that you understand you know the the love and the call that god has on your life you know it is so important that you understand these things so we're going to kick this off talking about faith because faith is something that is I would say a bit of a challenge for so many people, Mm -hmm. especially coming into Christianity, you know, because a lot of people, you know, they, they want to find God in logic. They want to find God in, in different things, but it's just like what the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. Um, It takes faith to fully understand, or it takes faith to really, um, to really believe in God. Mm-hmm. To be honest, you've never seen God. You've never seen Come Jesus. On. We've never seen Jesus. All we have are these eyewitness accounts that are in the Bible that we are having, you know, placing our faith in. That's We've right. never met Paul. We never met um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. We never met none of these guys. None of them. But their 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 eyewitness testimony is in the Bible, and that's what we are. Uh, that's what we are, are 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 really leaning on and having faith in that they accurately. Um, depicted what was going on in that time so that we can fully understand and fully um, delve into the word of God and really understand what God is saying to us. Yes, sir. With that, uh, where do you want to kick this thing off at, bro? Um, And uh, I want to start with this. Um, I wrote something down. Christianity 
It meets our deepest needs. It calms our deepest fears. And it deals with our deepest hungers. Mm. I'm going to say that again. I want y'all to let that sink again. Because when you think about life as whole, what is our needs? We have, everyone has needs. Everyone has fears, even though we were not given the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Mm -hmm. But that's through Christ. That's in faith in Christ. And what are our deepest hungers? You know, and I'm starting there because I'm a person, and I wasn't always this way, but I'm a person that um, my relationship with Christ is is something that I really go after. Um, So I'm a person that fasts. And I fast a lot. You know what I mean? I'm not doing it for no one else but myself, bro. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I do this because I know, like we talked about in our first episode, some of the things that he's brought me out of. And because of the things or the decisions that I may have made Mm -hmm. in my past, it created a habit um, that wasn't like God. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those things where... Uh, where Paul makes the statement, he said, when I would do good, evil is always present or yeah. there is nothing good that dwells in my flesh and all that good stuff. And so what I did was I started to fast and go after God. Yes, I have done. I have done a 21 day absolute fast. I've done a 40 day absolute fast. And I do this not to boast about what I do. I do this because there is a hunger after God. Yeah. And I want and I have faith in God because you got to have a certain level of faith to not eat food. That's right. Uh, for a certain period of time, especially you know Chick Fil A. Okay, okay, <laughs> with the new cauliflower sandwich they got out here. Okay, <laughs> but anyway, sorry, bro. You know, you're good. He had to throw that in there. You know, and, and I'm on the fast. All right. <laughs> anyway, um, but I wanted to start very uniquely with this one because when you look at Jesus' ministry, he started off his ministry hungry. I want mm. y'all to think about that. When he started off his ministry, he started it off in a place of hunger. Um, The scripture says in Matthew 4, when you go um, to Matthew 4, the scripture says Jesus was led up. Hear this. He was led up of the spirit into a wilderness. Mm. He was led into a wilderness. Uh, This wasn't a comfortable place. So being led into wilderness, the word wilderness is a, a, a deserted place. So he put himself in a position where he had to have faith yeah. only in God. Yeah. Here's the man, mm-hmm. the man that had to have faith in God because he had to, he had to be whole. He had to be ready mm. for what's getting ready to come. It wasn't necessary. There was ministry that had to be done. He had to teach. Mm-hmm. There was so much that had to be done by faith because he's going into a world like us all. He was going into a world that was already has already made up his mind. Mm. had a culture that's already made up his mind on how God was or how things were supposed to be. And he had to be able to be sensitive enough. He had to have enough faith to draw Mm -hmm. the right people in so that they can understand that there is hope. Faith is hope. Hope. We have to have, um, what is the scripture? Um, Now faith is the substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen. Things that you can see is not having faith, is not having hope. Mm -hmm. So um, when you look at this particular scripture, when Christ was led into, and I feel like I'm preaching, but when you look at this scripture, when Christ was led into the wilderness, it says he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. But then here comes the enemy because we have to make this plan. We keep bringing up the enemy to let you know that he is real and that he does exist. Mm -hmm. But he, the enemy comes and he says, he says, if y'all be the son of God, If you be the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. Now, some theologians may argue about this, but I believe that Satan really didn't know. Mm. And the reason why I know that, because there is a scripture said that says that had he known, Mm. he wouldn't have crucified him. Come on. Come on. So the truth of the matter is this. He says, turn this thing into bread. And Jesus says something that is going to go back to our third episode. He says, man does not live by bread alone, but by the word Mm. of God. Yeah. The word of God. There is in the beginning, God, when he created the the heavens and the earth, he created everything with his word. Yeah. 
In the beginning was the word and the mm-hmm. word was with God and the word was God. There is the, the reason why faith is so important and, and, and is because what happens is we're so used to being comfortable. We're so used to uh, uh, operating a certain way that we're not relying on the word. So when it's time to get a word across or in those crucial moments that we need God or we need we need to hear from him mm. is because we have created a habit of not having faith in him or trusting his word. Yeah. His word is so important uh, in our lives. When he when he created man, he created man in our image. He said, let us create man. That was the word. Let us create man in our image and after our likeness. He gave a word and then he breathed life into us, the breath of life. His spirit dwells on the inside of us. So I just want to say this right now and I'm going to pass it. But I want to say that you can overcome whatever you're facing. Mm. There is nothing that you can that you can't overcome as long as you have that word, that spirit that dwells on the inside of you. Mm. Uh, and, and, and the enemy, he's after the, that word. He's after your posture. Yes, he's after he's after you. He wants you to get out of posture, just like Adam and Eve. He mm. wants you to get out of posture so that um, you can feel naked or feel alone. But God said, who told you you were naked? Come on. Who told you that you can't overcome this? Mm. And, 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 and we have to understand that it's not going to be easy. And I think sometimes we, again, we create the habit of being comfortable because we always look for, we always look for that comfort when things comes our way. Yeah. You can never calculate. You can never calculate when you're going to get punched in the mouth. Mm. You can never calculate when things are going to happen and it be the things that are closest to you. The people that are closest to you that take you in a different route. You'd be like, wait a minute, I didn't see that one coming. But the reason and but God is telling you in those moments right there to dig deeper. Mm. You got to dig deeper. You got to. And the only way you go from faith to faith. Only way you go from glory to glory, because it's like you, you're painting a picture. God is painting a picture. I, one of my favorite scriptures, uh, it says um, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and pictures of silver. Wow. One of my favorite scriptures. So the, the, there is a word that is perfect that is on the inside of you. Mm-hmm. And that word is faith. Come on. That word is faith, have faith. That is our currency. That is our stability. That is what keeps us driven. That is what keeps us going. That is what keeps us going after the big things. And Mm. we don't have to be limited. That's what keeps our our families together Mm. is faith. That's what helps your children, even though you may see them one way and they may be in a season in their life, come out a whole nother way because I am somebody's prayer of faith. Yes, Lord. Come on. I am somebody who who was lost, who was who did the drugs, who who did the women, who did all of these things, who had addictions and different things of that nature in so many different forms. But I'm here today not to say that I got it all together, but I'm here today to say that there is a God. Yeah, there is a God and I have faith in this God. And the more and, and the more I go after him. Yes, Lord, mm. the more that I go after him, the more that he shows me, the more that I understand that this word right here. It's true. Come on. That's come all on. I got. Yo. Come on. Well, you preaching. You yes, preaching. I, I, how can I come back after come that? <laughs> you got it, bro. Let's get it. I was Let's about to crack it. a joke, but at the same time, I was like, no, nah, I can't do that. <laughs> Boy, we're just on fire. Yes, right? sir. Yes, sir. Man. But no, nah, it's funny because you um you said something and the, the Lord literally dropped this in my in my spirit and I typed it out. So I mean if y'all heard some typing, it was me. But <laughs> It was like the first Adam fell because of a lack of faith. Come on. And the second Adam succeeded because of sincere faith in mm. God. You know, when Adam was presented and Adam and Eve was in the garden, they were presented with the ideas and the the clever questions that, that Satan had, mm-hmm. you know, gave them. You know, in Genesis chapter three, it says here that in verse one, uh, yeah, in the middle part of verse one, it says, did God actually say, King James said, did God really say? Mm-hmm. And it's just like how Satan is, you you know, he'll come in and he'll challenge things by saying, well, did God really say that? Did mm-hmm. God really do that? Yes, sir. But the problem with Adam is pro- Adam had um, so much power and dominion. 
that he did not stand on the power and dominion that God had already given him. Come on. Not only did he have power and dominion mm. over that, and he had the word of God, but he had power and dominion over Satan. He could have rebuked Satan in that moment because of the power that God had given him. All he had to do was stand on the word of God. The problem is, is that he became timid. He became, uh, what is it like? Uh, he became so weak in that moment and that he was, he also became almost like, um, what is it, a soft spoken, um, a person who, mm -hmm. who just doesn't, you know, they, they'll go with the flow. He became super gullible in that mm -hmm. moment. He just became that type of person and he, he put his wife out there and allowed her to be deceived. Mm -hmm. You know, not only did God give Adam the ability to not only just be over and have dominion and power over the animals and the plants and everything in the world, but he gave him dominion over Eve. Mm -hmm. He had the charge to watch over her. He had the charge to step in and say, you know what, Satan? No, I rebuke you. The word of God says X, Y, and Z, and this is what we're standing on. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, Satan wanted to, 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 to pull Adam and Eve out of the garden, which he successfully did, but he wanted to pull Adam and Eve out of the garden because he wanted Adam's part. He mm -hmm. wanted Adam's position. Adam's position was that of dominance. Mm -hmm. Adam's position was that of strength. Adam's position was that of a God, mm -hmm. like a God, because he had everything that he needed. And he was once and in that position. And he was once in that position. Yes, sir. Yes, and not sir. only was he not once in that position, but he wants it back. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, he can never get it back. Lost that, brother. Come on. <laughs> Come I on. Love it. And so because of that, we see that that first Adam failed because he did not step into his dominion power. He did not step into his dominion authority. He did not step up and, and, and save his wife. Instead, that he allowed his wife to hand him the fruit. Come on. You know, at that moment, he could have rebuked her. He could have rebuked all of that. But he took the fruit and he ate it. Mm. And then when we get to um, where, where were you at in um, Matthew four? In Matthew 4, where we see Jesus is now um, in the wilderness. He's on, he's on the mountain. He's, together, being bro. He's, he's being tempted by Satan. Satan comes at him with the same exact line of questioning that he did Adam. It all comes full, full circle. It Satan did. only, he doesn't have new tricks. He only has new faces. Mm. That's what, that's what the, the great late, the late great Keith Wonderboy Johnson used to say. <laughs> he's like, Satan don't have no good tricks. He just had new faces. Uh -huh. And the thing is, he used the exact, the exact same line of questioning. Mm. But the problem is, is that because he tried to attack Adam, he now tries to attack Jesus because Jesus has the same exact position, the same exact authority that Adam had. Now, I'm not saying that Jesus was Adam. Adam was Jesus. Is that it's it's even biblical. That's why they call Jesus the second, second Adam. Adam. Yes, sir. It's why they call Jesus the second Adam. But Satan comes in and he has the same line of questioning because of the fact that he wants Jesus' position. But the problem is Jesus knows fully who he is. Mm. He knows fully the source that he is being supplied from, and he knows fully who his father is, and he stands firmly on the word of God because he when Satan comes at him with the lies and with the trickery. Mm -hmm. What does Jesus do? He throws back the word of God on him. So every time that Satan comes to you with issues, with problems or whatever, you throw the word of God back in Satan's face because that's what you have to stand on. Man, I, want, I just want to say this and I'm going to give it back to my bro. But when I was hearing my brother talk, it's important like the proverb says, in all thy getting, get an get understanding. understanding. Come on. You have to get an understanding of why certain things are happening the way they are happening, because a lot of times it was nothing like my brother said, and he said it so eloquently. It's the fact that everything came back full circle. Adam was given something that I don't think he took the time to understand. Ooh. He was Ooh. given a lot, and a lot of times we're given things too that fast. Too, and we don't Ooh. understand it. We don't take the time to understand why. You were the first Come on. of us all. Mm -hmm. God has given you this land and all of this, and like you said, instead of rebuking it and casting it, and you knew truth. You knew truth. This is how you know sin lies within the flesh. He knew the truth. Mm -hmm. But he allowed, he allowed whatever it was at that moment, whatever he was thinking, because I don't know what he was thinking. Let me talk to the mic. I don't, know, <laughs> I don't know what he was thinking, but he, he allowed his wife to give him something because, mm. and this is even important as, as husbands, as men of God, you have to understand you're the leaders of your home. Come on. 
This is important. This is important that you understand that you are such a vessel that even if your wife or, or, or and your loved one does something and you know it's not truth, stand on your truth. Come on. Stand on your truth, even if it's uncomfortable. Sometimes every leader, and especially great leaders, every leader, um, they're not popular all the time. Mm-hmm. Their decisions are not popular all the time. Mm-hmm. But we have a responsibility because God speaks to us first. Come on. He deals with us first. That's why. And I was just talking to my brother, you know, who's running the uh, the gear behind here. Shout out uh, to Terrence. We love you, bro. Terrence, we love, love you, bro. You, man. Thank you, brother. <laughs> so Terrence, me and Terrence was talking how every time we're not centered as men of God, that there is certain things that happens in our household. Mm. Every time we're not centered and uh, operating in faith. Teach. We're not where there is something that is going on with our relationship with God at the time. And, and, and God is going to get our attention, especially mm. as believers. Mm. He's going to get our attention and that that uh, frustration you feel, that confusion you feel you need to get back centered. So maybe you need to turn down your plate. Maybe you need to go somewhere and pray Come on. because it's not always your wife. Mm. It's not always your Woo. children. It always boils Talk, down to the beginning. Talk. And, hey, Adam had no business. He had no business taking that apple and he knew better. The question is why? What, what was he? Was he feeling frustrated? Mm. Was he not centered? Did he not meet God that day? Did he not hear from God that day? Was it what was it that he in that moment that he allowed to be? Because it's okay. We're going to be vulnerable at moments, but stand on the truth of God. Yes. Because you got to expect, and I mean this no type of way, women of God. Please don't get me. Don't bash me. They're but, coming after you. Yeah. They, <laughs> please don't do it. <laughs> please don't do it. But you know they were they took our rib, our emotions. Mm. So they're emotional beings at time but they're great helps let me throw that in there they're great helps but sometimes you know as men of God we have to make sure that we're standing on the truth and getting an understanding why there is why is there attack happening in your home Mm. why is there attack happening in your family why we have to be centered enough to see when the enemy is coming and if we're not we have no one to blame but ourselves I don't even know how we got over here but all I know is Is that we're still dealing with uh, faith and operating in faith. I think because what happens is, and I got to pass the mic, but what happens is after... You know, the the uh, the fall of man happened. God gave man responsibility to work. Mm. Your work is never done. Mm. Your work is never done. It will never be finished until God says so. So until you until you return, until he returns. So we're always on. There's rest, Mm -hmm. but we have to always work. We have to work on our families. We have to work on our craft. We have to work on our careers. We have to work on being disciples. There's work. Work has to be done. It is not it's not an easy thing, but you're not alone. But you have to fight the good fight of faith. That's good. You have to fight the good fight of faith. And it's not about you can't quit every time things go left. Mm. You can't quit everything. Thomas, there's frustration in the atmosphere because I like I stated in the in the last episode where there's frustration, where there's confusion. The enemy is in the room. Mm. He is present in the room where there's arguments. The enemy is present in the room and you have to stop you have to stop it and readjust your atmosphere. Yes. That is so important. It is so important. Go ahead. Bro. It is so important. And I think, you know, when you look at that, you know, I want to I want to ask, you know, a lot of the men that may be listening and, and that's tuning in, you know, it, are you wondering why certain things are happening in your household? If you're, are your finances not, Come you know, in alignment? Are, is your wife nagging you too much? And does that get on your nerves a little bit too much? Is there certain things that your children do that get on your nerves and all these different things? And if that's the case, uh, I want to ask you this question. When was the last time you fasted? Mm. When was the last time you prayed? Come on. When was the last time that you, you know, really sought the presence of God? 
When was the last time that you led your family to church? When was the last time that you went to church? <laughs> you know, on, when was on. the last time you did these things? And I promise you, all of these things are happening only because of the fact that you neglected God in some area. Come on. As the shepherd, Ooh. as the man of God of your over your household, you are the family shepherd. You Come whatever on. comes into your household, whatever comes into your doorway, it, it comes through you. Yes, sir. So if there's disobedience in your house, it's because you've been disobedient. If there's a lack of faith, if there's a lack of hope or whatever, it's because it, it starts with you. Yes, sir. And I think as men, we have that responsibility, that charge that we have to stay um, in the face of God. Yes, sir. You know, we have to fast. We have to pray. We have to read our Bible. And, and it's so prevalent and so evident because when we're not doing those things, that's when Satan is, creeps in. That's when he comes in. That's when you start having problems. That's when you start, you know, taking the little mile that God, that, or the little mile that you allow Satan to come into. That's when you allow those marital problems to come in. Mm-hmm. You know, now that girl that works, she's flirting with you, saying that you cute. She liked the way that your your haircut is this way, mm-hmm. and you thinking that the head, mm-hmm. you know. And next thing you know, affairs, sin, and stuff like that. That does not happen overnight. It starts with little, little drops. Time. A little laving, laving, it, 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 it laving it the whole lump, and it starts with those type of things, and it's all because you, in some way, neglected God in some area, yes, sir. and so now when all the crap has hit the fan, and you're trying to figure out God, where were you at this whole time? God is saying, where were you at this where whole time? Where were you at? <laughs> I've been here in the same place, the same place, waiting for you. Come on, come on, looking bro. for you. Yes, sir. It's just like with with Adam. Mm-hmm. I think Adam got too excited. You know, he had Eve. You know, he was trying that's to be not, fruitful. That's how he, made her. Her. he said, "Whoa, man!" Right? <laughs> whoa. Adam got too happy. You know, and he was enjoying everything that God uh-huh. had given him. He got too comfortable. And he got too comfortable. That's good, bro. When that's you get comfortable, you allow Satan to come in. That's it. And we we have we don't have that luxury of ever being ever being comfortable because. We are the leaders of our home. And again, I'm not sure why God is leading us this way. However, um, you got to think because outside of our careers and different things, it was our family first. Yeah. Family is the biggest thing of life. Mm. I want y'all to let that sink. You have to understand that family is the biggest thing. And whether you're not or whether you're married or you plan to be or you're not married, whatever it is, you're still as a man, you still have to lead your family. Yeah. You still have to lead your family. And, and that's as a man, you, you're a leader everywhere you go. Yeah. And you can't be the leader that you are without having faith. That's right. It goes back into the, the scripture says without faith. Without faith, sorry, <laughs> I'm still working on it, y'all. Without faith, it is impossible to, to please, please God. 